This is going over physiology lecture again. It talks about some of these cells and other enzymes involved in digestion. <clears throat> Starting off here, just kind of introduce some of the players. Pancreatic ducts, I cells, S cells, D cells, G cells, E cells, P cells, excuse, excuse me, pterochromophin cells, parietal or oxyntic cells, chief or peptic cells, adipocytes, also gastric epithelial cells, E cells of the pancreas, also found in the stomach. I'm actually missing one on here, which is mucus cells. Okay, a lot of information here, but maybe if this order is memorized, well, no more, I'll just explain everything. Okay, so eye cells release, they're, in, they're found in the duodenum, the proximal duodenum. So eye cells, the proximal duodenum, in fact, both of these are, I and S, both found in the proximal duodenum. They release, eye cells release cholecystokinin, CKK, or excuse me, it's actually CCK. Mistake. And cholecystokinin does four things. It causes the contraction of the gallbladder, it stimulates the pancreas, relaxes the bile duct so that it opens, and it inhibits gastric motility. Okay? So, I believe that it also actually causes you to feel satiated as well, like satisfied, like full. <clears throat> These eye cells that secrete cholesterol kinin are stimulated by long peptides and long fat molecules. So when these get when these eye cells detect like basically undigested food, they're gonna say, hey, we need to stimulate gallbladder, pancreas, you know, all these things to, to to basically cause this fluid to be digested more. It's interesting here that they inhibit the gastric moti motility. I think that's to slow things down so that they have enough time, the food, the chyme, or whatever, has enough time to mix with, with the enzymes and stuff being released from the pancreas. The pancreas releases a lot of, a lot of different things. So this closest to kinin, it stimulates actually the pancreatic ducts, as we mentioned, so does secretin. So they, it stimulates the pancreatic ducts to release, I believe it's bicarbonate and sodium. Bicarbonate acts as an acidic buffer because you know the stomach's super acidic, but uh, you don't necessarily want that acid going everywhere. So that makes sense, close to kind of stimulating a buffer, but it also releases trypsin and carboxypeptidase, which essentially break down proteins. It also releases amylase, which breaks down carbohydrates, and it releases lipase, and phospholipase and cholesterol esterase, which break down fat, okay? So those are some of the things released from the pancreatic duct. So I cell sends those things, releases cholecystokinin, cholecystokinin stimulates the pancreatic ducts, releases all the stuff, breaks the food down, cholecystokinin also slows things down. Next, S cells. S cells are the, is what, also found in the duodenum, is what releases secretin. Secretin is the thing that also stimulates the pancreatic ducts. So what is going to stimulate the S cells? Well, S cells are triggered by low pH, or in other words, lots of hydrogen ions, which makes sense since they tell the pancreatic ducts to release bicarbonate, which is a buffer for acid. So it makes sense. So these two things basically trigger this, closest to kinin and secretin trigger this to release stuff that's going to digest food and neutralize the acidity. So these S cells, they release secretin. Secretin does a number of things. It inhibits the gas from release from the G cells. So down here, we're going to talk about these G cells. G cells release gastrin, which ultimately, uh, gastrin, um, I'll go into that in a minute. So it inhibits the release of, of gastrin from the G cells. The Brunner's, it also triggers the Brunner's glands to release a whole bunch of mucus. It also tells the pancreas, as we talked about earlier, to release bicarbonate and these other things, and also tells the bile to be released from the gallbladder. So secretin does a lot of stuff. So I cells and S cells and the duodenum do a lot of stuff in the pancreas and all that. So next, D cells. D cells are found in the distal 20% of the stomach in these glands called pyloric glands. 
So these D cells are in the pyloric glands. And <clears throat> maybe you could think of is being in the duodenum and then DG being in the pyloric. Maybe that'll help, I don't know. Anyway, so there, there's also mucus cells found in the pyloric, but these are the two cells in the pyloric, the D cells and the G cells. So D cells, they release something called somatostatin. What does somatostatin do? Somatostatin inhibits G cells. Inhibits G cells, okay? And now let's talk about these G cells. So G cells, what do they do? G cells release gastrin. Gastrin is, is a huge thing here that triggers a lot of this whole cascade because gastrin triggers enterochromaffin cells, Enterochromaffin cells release histamine. Histamine triggers the parietal or oxyntic cells to release hydrogen, and hydrogen triggers the chief peptic cells to release pepsinogen. So it's really these G cells that are like almost the center point of all this stuff. So they're inhibited by some things, and they're also um, stimulated by some things. They're stimulated by excitation from the vagus, also from stomach distension, but most of all, the main thing that's going to excite these G cells to release gastrin is protein, okay? So G cells trigger or excited by protein, but the two S's, which is nice because S stands for stop, somatostatin and secretin inhibit or stop the G cells, okay? So S and D cells, secretin and somatostatin, inhibit this guy, but this guy's excited about a lot of other stuff. These, these G cells again are found in the, in the distal 20% of the stomach from in the pyloric glands. Okay, so that's gastrin. Gastrin, I should probably write it on here, um, triggers enterochromaffin. I'm just going to do it enterochromaffin cells to release histamine. Okay, so that's what starts this big cascade. So. Here it is. Now we're going to the proximal 80% of the stomach. In the gastric glands, we have three different types of, actually four, because mucus as well. But enterochromaffin cells, parietal or oxyntoic cells, chief or peptic cells. Same thing, two names. Okay. So when gastrin stimulates these enterochromaffin cells, they release histamine. And histamine then goes to the parietal cells and has it release its contents, H plus and intrinsic factor. So <clears throat> remember G cells, gastrin, gastrin to enterochromaffin cells, enterochromaffin cells to histamine, histamine to pyloxyntic cells, um, hydrogen to chief peptic cells, and then pepsinogen, which breaks down a pepsin, which has a lot of breaking down food. Okay, so wow, a lot of information there, but uh, where were we? Gastrin, enterochromaffin cells, histamine. Okay, so here we are down to the parietal or oxyntic cells. These cells secrete mostly, they, it seems like to me from looking at it, mostly what they do is they release water and hydrochloric acid. And, and it seems like, <clears throat> you know, there's kind of this complicated mechanism of how it works, but that's mostly what happens. And what they take back, it seems like, is sodium and HCO3, I believe. I can't remember. Don't put me on that. Anyway, so there we go. So, so parietal cells are going to, so sorry, turcomar produces the histamine. Histamine now stimulates the parietal oxyntic cells to release two things, intrinsic factor and H+. plus. So what is intrinsic factor? It's this glycoprotein that's resistant to hydrogen. Intrinsic factor goes down in the stomach and eventually somehow it interacts with B12 and then it like settles in the ileum and then apparently goes back and the B12 is stored in our liver. So it has something to do with, with getting B12, okay? So this hydrogen that it releases, apparently parietal cells are insanely good at releasing hydrogen. It has an ionic gradient of three million to one, which is, Incredible. So, going back down here to these uh, oh, the parietal oxyntic cells, this hydrogen, the hydrogen stimulates these chief or peptic cells. Well, also secretin, which came from up here, also stimulates these chief peptic cells.
to release pepsinogen. Pepsinogen breaks down pepsin, and then pepsin breaks down proteins. So some other cells here that are important to know are these adipocytes. Adipocytes are also gastric epithelial cells release something called leptin. And leptin causes you to feel full and satiated or satisfied by going to the hypothalamus. And, <clears throat> and there in the hypothalamus, it, it binds to uh, these receptors that cause you to feel, feel full. It also has to do with insulin resistance and help helping to form compact bone. Now, the, the, uh, the epsilon cells of the pancreas and the cells in the fundus of the stomach are stimulated by, by distension. So when they get full in the stomach, or sorry, they are inhibited by distension in the stomach. They are stimulated by stress. So if you get stressed, you're gonna get, these cells are going to release ghrelin, you're going to get hungry. But if it's, your stomach's full, they're going to inhibit the release of ghrelin, so you're not going to be hungry. And apparently, ghrelin binds to the uh, closest to kind of receptors in the hypothalamus. They must inhibit it or something. <clears throat> okay, and that is most everything here. So another important thing to note is just that the neural stimulation, the vagus, and the enteric seems to stimulate hunger in this whole process, whereas the somatostatin seems to inhibit it. I think that is most everything. Quite a lot of information here.